Hi friends, it's Trisha with Becoming Me. I'm gonna do a masked knitter. <laughs> hashtag the masked knitter. Because I wanted to participate in the hashtag for Mask Monday ladies or Monday mask ladies. <laughs> I'll have to check and I'll put it down below. But for this one, I'm gonna do something a little different. We're gonna explore knitting. You wanna learn basics? Maybe you already know how to knit, but then you can enjoy which mask I'm using. Stick around. Okay, friends, <laughs> we're back. All right, so I started off in the shower with the Rice Water Bright. It's a foaming cleanser. It's actually an Avon product and it's crossed with the Face Shop. So it's Avon brings the Face Shop into their product line. Did that make sense? It's a foaming cleanser. I just started using this uh, this past week. I use it after I use the conditioner and stuff in the shower so that after the conditioner uh, rinses down my face, then I cleanse it with this. What I use beforehand and I also use in the evening and I, I flip flop between because I have fun just switching around. I'm sure you understand that. I also use the Anu Clean Comforting Cream Cleanser and Mask. So this could be a mask and a cleanser. It's dual purpose, fun. But today, like I said, I used this. Now, I want to try to put on this Dr. Belmure. It feels like it's a gel thing. Let's see how long it needs. Um, I don't have my little thing here to help me read it. To use, begin with cleanse dry skin. Remove the sheet from the package, gently unfold, place evenly and firmly to face, and leave it on for 10 to 20 minutes. All right, so in the meantime, I, my goals for this video is just to explore yarn labels and what you need to get started. And at the end of this, after I've removed the mask, I'll quickly show you the project that I've been working on. And that's it. Oh, and we'll also learn, <laughs> we're gonna learn how to do the knitted cast on. Things I regret, doing this without a mirror, one. Hoping it doesn't go into my eyes. Let's see. I think I did it. Well, whatever the case, there's a lot of liquid on here. So I want to spread it to my neck as well. Because if I'm going to have a reaction, why not have it all over my body, right? <laughs> I don't think I will. Because the mask that I chose today is... Hold on. Get this right. I'm going to cheat and look at my phone in a second to see if it's on properly. So I chose the Dr. Belmere mask. It's intensive face mask. Ooh, I sound like I'm Darth Vader. It's because it's coming off. It has a Cica peptide. And a Cica peptide is actually tiger grass. It's like when the tigers are wounded. Ooh, it tastes terrible. Do you see it spitting on my mouth? <laughs> when tigers are wounded, they roll around in this grass to fix their wounds. I don't know if this is going to work for me to flip my head forward. All right. Oh, there we go. I think you're supposed to be like relaxing with your face back, right? So my plan to teach you the knit might not work too good. All right. So let's do this. Set a timer for 15 minutes. It's on the clock. 15 minutes. When you're at the store, I'm going to start this with a worsted weight yarn. Yarns go in different categories. There's bulky, there's lightweight, baby yarn, and such. I'm going to keep messing with my face. And so on the label, there's a universal coding system on there. I don't know if you can see it, but it will say like a number. Not like a number. It does say a number. Hold on. It will give a number in a little yarn ball right there above my finger. Can you see that? This one says it's a four medium. So that means that this is a worsted weight yarn. That would be easier for you to see. It's a little bit thicker. It's not the thickest yarn. You're gonna want a flat, not a flat, but a round smooth yarn, not like a boucle or a homespun. Anything that's kind of lumpy bumpy is not gonna really work right now when you're first learning. It's also gonna show you knitting needles and crochet hooks. And it's gonna say US and the number that you need. So for this one, it's saying that we should use the recommended size is a US 8. So 
When you're first starting out, I would recommend that you get bamboo needles, okay? And up top, like these are, this is just in a package right here. Um, they're clover. You can get them anywhere. They are, it will say like number eight. This is a number three, for example, okay? Because when you're using the bamboo needles, your yarn is less apt to slip off of the needles when you're just starting out learning how to knit. You can even pick up like metal needles at the dollar store. These are identified on the top. They say US 8. This actually has etching into the um, bamboo. So later on you can read it if you have good eyes that it would say what yarn, what needle size. There's also gauges, but we'll get into that later. Little gauge things that you can stick the needles in in case it's not marked. But look for the package that says eight. Get yourself a nice worsted weight yarn, okay? So what I'm gonna have to do is flip this camera around somewhere, somehow. I got a strap for my head. <laughs> I'm gonna try it, who knows. I might have to take the mask off, you know, to do this. Um, so yeah, but I'm going to put this on my head, figure this out, and then I'm going to show you a view from this way, looking at my hands. I'm right-handed. I don't know how to do the left-handed to show you. All right. So I'm going to be right back showing you this angle of how to do <laughs> a knitted cast on, because if you learn the knitted cast on, it you're that much farther ahead when you're doing the knit stitch. So the working yarn comes out of the ball, drapes over your first finger, extends down the inside of your hand. You pick up the tail end, wrap it behind and over and it crosses. And then what we're going to want to do is come through this loop that you just created and pull that yarn through. At which point you're gonna to wanna to pull on the working yarn because that will tighten up your little knot there as you're, don't worry, this is getting bigger, but it's okay, it's a slip knot. So then at that point, we're gonna pull, you could pull both ends if you want to make this smaller. Here we go, okay? But what I'm doing is holding the working end through my first finger and middle finger and kind of pulling it with my ring and fourth finger to make it smaller. That's your slip knot. So you're gonna take your needle and you're gonna slide that yarn, that loop onto your needle, onto your left needle, okay? Then we're gonna take our right needle and we're gonna put the needle through that loop. It's going through the loop. <laughs> through the loop behind that front needle, which is your needle in your left hand. I pinch these needles like so, and I'm kind of still holding on to this left needle with my the rest of my hand kind of tucking it together. But it's pinched both of these needles now. I'm pinching the right needle with my thumb and pointer finger. And the mask is slipping into my eye. Hang on, hold please. I aborted the mission of trying to teach you how to knit with my mask on. That's a lot of liquid in that mask. A lot of liquid. I don't think it would have absorbed any much, you know, much further if I left it on for 10 minutes lo longer, right? That was a lot. It felt nice. <laughs> They're very generous. I wonder if you could like take it and kind of after, well, then your fingers would be in it. I was going to say try to squeegee it back. As you're pulling it out, maybe squeegee it. I'm going to try it next time. Save some of the product in there and because <laughs> I'm frugal and, but the mask is so cheap, but pour it into a little container. I could use it later. I don't know. All right, let's resume with our knitting. <laughs> let's get back there. Okay, so if you make a mistake, all you do is pull it off and we'll try again. We'll learn the process again. My yarn comes over. The working yarn is right here. It's wrapped around my hand. I cross it. 
then I'm pulling on the tail end and I'm pulling this working yarn that I just draped over my hand through. You pull both of these little tails and the loop at the same time for a slip knot and then you make it smaller by pulling both ends. It's probably best to do that while it's on the needle. It'll be easier. How many ways can I say this? But you know what? I'll say it different ways because maybe a different way will click with you. Everybody learns differently. So, all right, let's try again. We're gonna put this needle from left to right through the loop. Now both needles are through that one slip knot that you made, okay? I kind of pinched the two needles together. I'm using my, almost like a trigger hand to kind of pick this up, wrap the yarn around and over that needle, my right hand needle is underneath my left needle. And I'm pulling the yarn, the working yarn a little bit. See how it's wrapped around my finger? So it stays a little taut, but not too taut. You'll get used to the tension. And then that point pushes the working yarn through the loop that's on your needle. And you can let go. Both needles will face the same direction for a minute. So kind of twist that loop. I'm bringing this needle around so it's going under the loop and through. Then you take your right hand needle and you tuck it behind the left and you're back where you started, where your slip knot, where both of the needles go through the loop. We're gonna pinch them together. I'm kind of pinching this right hand needle. I see I'm doing that. It's okay that this is opened up a little bit. We can tighten it later. I'm taking like a trigger finger. My yarn, my fingers are kind of holding the tension of the yarn. I'm going from behind, wrapping over the front, pulling it kind of tight so that these two match. Then I'm pulling my left hand needle back towards me, my right hand needle, sorry, back towards me and pushing it through the loop. And we lift it up a little bit. See, I let go so we can lift it up a little bit. Both needles rate, re, point the same way. My left hand needle is going to go under the loop and through the hole. Right now it's behind. And now we're gonna swap it out, both of them through and the right hand needle goes under the left and I'm pulling on that working yarn to tighten up, not too tight, you still wanna be able to work through there, tighten up gently that little loop that we just made. See, now we have three stitches on the needle. Okay, we're pinching it, we're taking our yarn and going behind the needle and back, wrapping over, see how it's starting to wrap around my finger to make tension. I'm pulling the right hand needle back towards me and I have the working yarn still on that right hand needle as it guides through the loop. I let go to get a little more slack. Point both tips the same way. Take my left hand needle, go under and through the loop and then I swap both the needles so that the right is under the left and I tighten it up see I'm tightening up okay now I have one two three four stitches on the needles okay let's take a look at it four stitches want to try again pull it off <laughs> let's use now these like I said were very slippery we can use some bamboo needles if you can get to the point where you another way to do the slip knot first off before I go in that direction here's my working yarn going this way the tails coming this way I'm taking it and I'm just twisting it see just twist it and then I'm going to grab the working yarn through that hole 
instead of making the big loop on your hand. We're going to put it on the needle, tighten both the ends up onto the needle. Okay. We're going to take our right hand needle from the left to the right. We're going to put it through that loop and it's going behind the left hand needle. We're coming around the back, over the needle and back, pulling it through the loop and then easing that working yarn through that loop. Both needles point the same direction. Slide the yarn down so you could do this, but I'm still holding the yarn with my other fingers. And the needle is going to go from under to up through that loop. And now you could take off the right needle. So we have our other stitch, okay? Now we're coming through from left to right again. And we're wrapping around the back over the front. We're pulling this through while I have tension right here. And we're going to push it through so that working yarn comes through the loop. How you doing? Are you doing good? And then we're going to have two needles pointing the same way. Okay. We're going to bring this loop up behind the left needle. And that left needle is going to go under and through. Boop. And then we're going to switch these needles so that that left needle is on top again. We're going to tighten it up and we're ready. We're ready for that next stitch. One more. This is going to be the last one. And then I want you guys to practice this. Okay. So we have it like a trigger fingers here, right? Okay. It's coming around the back over the top. We're pulling it down nice so it's a little taut but not too tight not too tight and then we're going to pull the needle through from behind and it's going to it swaps see how it swaps over to the top and that yarn follows along with it we're gonna slide this out a little bit so we can work better with it and our both of our needles are pointing the same way the needle on the left is coming under that yarn in front here and going through the loop and then we're swapping out so that our left needle is on top of the right needle and we're ready to go again. If you want to leave your work and go back to it later, you just pull out your right needle and they all just sit on there nicely. So that's a knitted cast on. Okay friends, so how did you do? Did you try it? Do you have the supplies? If you did try it, I hope that it worked for you and that you're not getting frustrated. It takes time, the coordination. I started as a crocheter, so I was used to a hook pulling my yarn and this was just like, there's nothing to grab it. But as you build the muscle memory, it'll get easier. So I hope that you gave it a try. I wanted to show you, and like I said, that's a knitted cast on. So you're already one step ahead because now you know how to do the knit stitch, believe it or not, just from doing that knitted cast on. You could do this. All right, let's talk about the project that I am doing now that I'm almost done with. My friend gave me this beautiful yarn. It's B basis and it's 75 cotton. 15% wool and 9% cashmere. She gave me, it's made in Italy and she gave me three balls of this yarn. It's so beautiful. So I had to find a pattern that would suit it. So there's a pat, two patterns out there. One is a clapete and it has all of these like drop stitches. It's more like a long rectangular shawl that you wrap around. And the other one is called a batkus, B-A-T-K-U-S, I believe. And that's like an elongated triangular shawl. I think it's just knit stitch, knit pearl or garter, you know, like a basic shawl. So if you combine, if the back kiss and the clapete got together and had a baby, they would have this pattern right here, which is the clapicus or something like that. I'm butchering the name. I know I am. There's like a hyphen there. 
I'll put the information down below. I'll put the name here and I'll try to link the pattern in the description box. But let's take a look at this, okay? Here it is, almost finished. Is it not beautiful? It's so beautiful. So it's a nice wingspan to it too. You can't even see the whole thing, right? Because of, <laughs> there's not enough room in this whole shot to get the whole thing. But I love it. And it's so fun to do because as you're doing the decreases, you're doing this drop stitch thing here. So that's, and that's what opens it up and makes it so beautiful, right? So because this is a wool and cashmere, the yarn kind of clings together, but it's fun when you get to that point and you're going to be dropping the stitches. Cause like right here is, I'm like midway through dropping the stitches. So you kind of just, I don't know if you can see it, but you tug on either side and release that pearl stitch all the way down. So fun, so nice. And all you really need to know how to do for this is a knit pearl, knit two together and make a, make one. So, I mean, it's a little bit more advanced, but not that, not too extreme. And I only have like minimal left. So I'm excited. I'm almost done with this. You weigh the yarn, it's all, it's, it's pretty fun. It's very fun. Okay, so that's my finished not finished, but my work in progress, my whip. <laughs> That's what we call it. This is my whip, soon to be. Some people call it um, <laughs> a PhD. It's partially half done. <laughs> I have my PhD here. <laughs> it's fun. All right, friends. I really appreciate you watching and joining me today. If you like this kind of video, I really like it if you could give me a thumbs up because it helps out the channel. Also, if you aren't subscribed, it would be great if you can come back and subscribe and stick around. I'd love to have you part of this family of friends that we're creating here. So, as always, be well. Thanks for watching. Bye.